Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. We did not come here to make you laugh tonight. We came here to sell you something. And I want you to pay particular attention because the amazing Master Tool Co Corporation, a subsidiary group of Fly-By-Night in Industries, has entrusted who? Us. To show you the handiest and dandiest kitchen tool you've ever seen. And, yeah. and don't you want to know how it works? First, you take two ordinary podcasters, you place them between the two patented pans. You reach for the tool that's not a slicer, it's not a dicer, it's not a chopper and a hopper. What the hell could it possibly be? It's the Points of Interest podcast. Welcome to the most generic podcast on the internet. My name is Josh Hawks. I am the 303 Ninja. And right over there, he is my podcasting partner for life. He is the other guy. It's Mr. Francis Fernandez. I think I hit the wrong oh, button I was, again. I was really expecting Ron Papil to come out of nowhere and sell us a, a rotisserie chicken. Uh, Ron, Ron Papil wouldn't step on his own dick that many times. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, the thing is, he never did it live. He always did it pre-recorded. That's so. true. And I don't know how many times he's done it. You know? I, I can't tell you how many times I actually read that before we went, you know, before we had our little conversation, before we did this. So, look, I, you this know, was your I did Winnebago it. Man moment. I did it three times, you know, yeah, yeah. In, in practice mode, all the way through without stepping on my own dick. But as soon as that, that red light turns on, it all falls pressure's apart. On. It all falls yeah, apart. On. Uh, you you did say something that I very much very much appreciate. It was my uh, Winnebago Man moment. Uh, if I had had a real Winnebago Man moment, I would have stopped halfway through and cussed for about a minute straight. But because this goes out on YouTube as well, you don't want to cuss within the first minute of your broadcast or video That's because. True. If you're going to get monetized, you just lost it in the first 30 seconds mm. because. Yeah. Uh, accoutrement. Accoutrement. A oh, man. I need to get some of those sound bites. Um, for those people that don't know, uh, there's a video on the YouTubes and a documentary, I believe, that's running on Tubi or the other one, uh, Pluto. Pluto. <laughs> I can't ever remember the name of it. Um, it's called the Winnebago Man, and it follows this guy who did a, um, a, a a commercial, basically. Like a what's the word I'm looking for? Like an industry commercial. He did an infomercial for he did an infomercial for um, Winnebago an RV park. Yeah, well, Winnebago's not even RV parks. It was Winnebago's in general. Right. Yeah. And it's the the, the video that's out there. There's there's Many different versions of it, but if you want to see the the ultimate version, look up the definitive Winnebago man. And it's damn flies are everywhere. The damn <laughs> flies. <laughs> Can we get rid of the flies? Uh, you will if you watch all twenty seven minutes of it, you will understand what we're talking about when we're talking about the flies. Um. I, I don't want any more shit from anybody, Not including even including myself. You got to do the hand. Yeah. Though. You got to do the hand. All right. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just a guy. What what happened was it it was a a couple three day taping for this Winnebago video, and the the video crew took all the bloopers and put them out, you know, South Park viral style. Um, do you remember uh, Mike and I think it was Mike and Spike's animation oh, tour God. or something like that? <laughs> I yeah. think it. I think it toured uh, along with that. You know, it got no, played at shows similar to that, where it's just you know oddities and weird mm -hmm. movies and shorts. Uh, and it started to pick up a lot of steam, and it's just a guy losing it for a half hour, just losing his shit, and. I always watch it anytime I perceive that I've had a bad day. Right. I go home, I watch the Winnebago man and realize my day wasn't that bad. I, Especially in all the, in all the years I've been alive and all the projects I've been involved with, all the things I've done never once 
have I <laughs> said, can we get rid of the damn flies? There's flies in the shot. There's there's three flies in the shot. The worst part is, or not that, or maybe the worst part. The best part is when he starts when he starts breaking down. You realize he wrote everything he's saying about mm-hmm. everything he's doing, so he knows exactly what's supposed to happen, what's going on, mm-hmm. and he's just so frustrated with himself. It is, ah, oh, it's just it's 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 magic. It's it is. art. It is uh, the the yeah. documentary actually follows that there was a guy that saw it let's just say it was mike and spike's animation tour he saw it there and fell in love with the idea of who this guy was and wanted to track him down ends up tracking him down in the documentary you find out that the winnebago man has has gone blind he's cynical as hell it's not just it's not just a bad day at the shoot he's just a cynical old man but yet somehow it's still funny. Mm-hmm. And then they took him on tour. So they put a blind, you know, mostly, you know, vision impaired dude on stage. Then all he did was cuss at people for like a half hour. And Yeah. You find out that's really his personality. Yeah. He's just really angry all the time. Um, so. But yeah, great, a great, a great half hour. If you're frustrated in your day or if you need a, a giggle, or a laugh, or you want to see, if you want to see someone have a mental breakdown. Who doesn't? I mean, I'd still rather see uh, <laughs> uh, a conniption fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Or a yeah. kerfuffle. Oh, definitely. A kerfuffle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word. That's a nice word. I like kerfuffle. It anyway, is. how's it going? Yeah. What's going it, on, man? How's it been? You know, it has been okay. It has been all right. Uh, despite Ooh. despite uh, work, it, despite work trying to set things back. But we don't talk about mm-hmm. that here. Uh, yes. Trying to dish out dick kicks left and right. But, you know, another, another story for another time. Uh, despite all that, things is good. You know, it's it's the fall season. I didn't even realize that next week is Thanksgiving. As we record oh, yeah. this, anyway. Time is flying. Last week was Veterans Day, and then, you know, this week is a regular week for most people, and the next week, just three days of, it, it, of work. It has has Veterans Day always been on a Friday, and I've never no, paid attention? It, it, it was the Monday, I think, last year. Okay. So, or no, you, it was a, like a Wednesday or Thursday last year. But, so you, it, it, it's, but it, Monday it is the Monday. observation day, typically, yes? Usually, yes, but I well, want to say that I, I mean, it's a specific day. Gotcha. So, I mean, obviously, since we do this a week after the fact, you know, we want to thank all the people that, you know, serve the country. Yes. I also want to, you know, on the side note, want to thank everybody that served us because I got paid a day early because of it. So, right on you guys. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah. I, I, I just really quickly looking up whether or not it's just a very. It's just it's always on that day, but I think it is because I remember one year it was a Wednesday, and I'm like, "Are oh, taking a day off on a Wednesday and working the rest of the week? Mm. Bad form work. N- bad." Form. I I disagree, Francis. Um, the three days that you can take off in a week are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yes. If you take off a Tuesday or a Thursday. Well, all you're doing is just setting yourself up for, you know, even longer week in, in mentally, it seems. That's true. Wednesday's That's great. True because, you know. a midweek, midweek break. There's nothing yeah, that, there's point. nothing wrong with a midweek break. Friday is obvious. Monday, obvious. But people that take Tuesdays off, like, what are you doing? <laughs> you still got to come back to Sometimes work. Sometimes they just make it happen. Yeah. Well, Yes. <laughs> Obviously, there's things that happen, but if you have a choice, yeah. Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm yeah. with you. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, it, but this is a Tuesday as we record things, and yes, 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 it is. <laughs> yeah. and as Talk we yeah. as we are recording things on a Tuesday, this particular Tuesday night, there is a possible, hopefully. Uh, a historic event that's going to take place in less than four hours' time at recording. 
uh, the NASA SLS Artemis launch is uh, uh, all set for green flag. They're 90% green flag. I don't know what the fuck that means. It's like being partially pregnant, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) I've never heard this comparison, but I, I I think I'm going to use it for everything. (laughs) I mean, like, Oh, I half expected. (laughs) What do you mean? You half? That's like being half pregnant. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, was this the one that they had delayed a few times before already? Where Francis. Like, oh, the weather's bad. Francis, this project has been delayed since, let me look at my notes, since 2017. Oh, wow. It's only oh, it's a couple of times then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, only only a couple of times. I don't know a whole hell of a lot about this mission. I love space. We've talked about this numerous times. Um, it's an unmanned launch they're flying around the moon. It's going to take yeah. about 30 days, I guess. And they're going to do some sciencey stuff. I don't know. All I do know is that this is, uh, where's my notes? This is the most uh, powerful, uh, powerful and complex rocket since the Saturn V, which, you know, launched us first into space. Um, it's 41 feet taller, longer. Uh, taller, I guess. Taller, it's vertical. So yeah. yeah taller. So forty-one feet taller than the Saturn V. Yep. So you know, as of right now, as we're talking, the Saturn V is still the most powerful rocket to ever go to space. But this one is, I think, quickly going to take its place as long as everything goes to plan. But yep. when you try and been trying to launch something since two thousand seventeen. We'll see what happens. Well, there's a live feed right now on, there is. on Twitter. Two hours and 38 minutes to go to launch. So, so there, there's, there's a half close. hour. There's a half hour hole built built into the whole thing, but it's the not timer. built into the timer. Mm. Uh, depending on what feed you're looking at, the, the timer has, let's just say, whatever you said, two hours and eight minutes, whatever you said. Or 38 minutes, yeah. 38 minutes, and then underneath that time is an extra, uh, another clock, and I think it has a half hour, 45 minutes added to it, which is going to be, that the, the, the clock underneath is your, the one that I saw, it was the actual clock. Yeah, they're not showing it here, but uh, there's probably another feed where they're showing it. Yeah, yeah this yeah. one here doesn't have the, the second clock, but there you go. Look, I mean... It's been a while since we've been to the moon. I think um, we, uh, you know, we've we we've been talking about it for ages to go back to the moon and mm-hmm. to colonize the moon, even to like have a, a moon space station. You know, um, yeah. I mean, it'll be great to if we can finally if we can finally get back there because we haven't done anything space wise that's been outside of observation and, and pictures and stuff and like satellites we haven't done anything kind of cool in space in like a really long time mm-hmm. so I'm looking forward to uh, us making our way to the moon again um, you know uh, thanks to the inspiration of Mr. Ralph Cranden you know telling his wife to the moon Alice oh wow, Jesus Christ <laughs> 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 Fuck! <laughs> leave it up to Francis to leave uh, to somehow somehow bring in the 1950s uh, domestic violence reference into into <laughs> space flight. <laughs> it's it's a sit it's a it's a sitcom called The Honeymooners for you for you young folk out there. <laughs> Black and white. Uh, <clears throat> it takes place in an apartment pretty much the entire time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, cool. I, I'm looking forward to. I didn't know. I didn't know this was happening. So that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah, this actually happen. It was. It was pretty cool. A couple months ago, when they, the mo- so there's been a couple launch attempts recently in the last few months, and then one of them was when we were working at god awful hours in the morning, and I actually convinced the people that control electronics such as TVs and ways to connect the TVs like, Hey, we should, right. uh, all take a moment and watch this. This is an important historical thing. We're going, you know, going back to the moon. It's NASA going to yeah. the moon. It's not, it's not SpaceX. It's not, 
it's not big dick energy guy it's not you know it's 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 not the virgin guy it's nasa we should watch this and they right. were like this that's that is a great idea we're gonna watch this everybody stop what you're doing and i was like holy shit it worked and then they scrubbed it and i'm <laughs> like all right well fuck me i guess <laughs> yeah but wow. yeah i'll be i'll be watching that after after this for sure for yeah sure. no kidding wow this is great it's only for a day they're coming back i guess in a, in a day it says there's two it, it's launching the moon on today and then it says tomorrow trajectory burn and then earth views so you get to see earth views tomorrow street from this from this uh mm. from this rocket so that'll be fun that'll be really cool. i love it i love i love space so good on you space people space is pretty damn awesome uh the, spacex still continues to put satellites in space litter the sky depending on your your view on that i guess but uh G- give uh, people internet. Yeah, give rural people rural, rural. How do you say that? Rural, rural, yeah, rural. people internet. Um, yeah. and I, I, I love watching rocket uh, or a reusable rocket. That's just awesome watching watching it. Fo- you know, yeah. float and position itself to come back to Earth and the the whole nine yards. I love it. It's. You know, I, I, I can I can separate company from person and the sure. company the company's doing awesome shit. So Yeah. I'm I'm like, all whatever. for it. Like it's it's getting us to the it's getting us out in space. That's that's exactly um though I wish, you know, airports would soon have spaceports as well and it would be like you know right. William Shatner would be the person on the tower bringing you in. No. Maybe maybe Robert Stack. Yes, because if it's Shatner, he'll just be like, "There's something on the plane's wing." Yeah, got it. He's gonna freak out every time he sees something, you know, because because he did that. In, didn't he do that in airplane? Didn't uh, well, he look uh, so out the window. William like, Shatner did that in Twilight Zone. He did it in Twilight Zone, but I thought but he then his role. he didn't. He didn't do it in Airplane too. But the guy that plays Stryker. Whatever that Michael oh, he's Michael Hayes Michael Haynes Haynes I think yeah Doug Haynes Michael know. Doug Chris Michael, Steve Doug, Michael Doug Chris <laughs> I don't no I yes. don't remember what his first name is all of them it's Hayes yeah. or Haynes or something like that Striker wow if you, if you type in airplane the first thing it looks for is airplane the movie it doesn't not just like airplane the definition it's mm. airplane the movie. Robert Hayes is Ted Stryker. Robert Hayes. See, I was getting there. You're getting there. <laughs> uh, Smith and Bullets chimes in there. Has there been anything mentioned about the reusable rockets in KSP-2? So Kerbal Space Program 2. Um, not that I have heard of, but uh, KSP-2 is going into early access uh, f- in February for like, 40 bucks or something like that 30 bucks 50 bucks something like that which is steep for an early access game but it's Kerbal so I'm all for it but you can do uh, Swiss and Bullets you can do reusable rockets now Um, the thing is is that the way the game is set up you can't really like uh, we're going to get super nerdy, but if you get, if you get your, if you get a stable orbit and then try to get your first stage back to Kerbal or earth, you can do it, but you couldn't do it at the same time as flying because you can only control one, one, uh, unit at a time. That was nerdy as shit. Uh, but I brought up airport stuff, not because airplane, and its sequel, which are both amazing flicks that stand up. Yes. And and I say that because someone that's much younger than me watched it and loved it. So Revenge of the Nerds is going to be put on the list and see if it passes that test. But um, That's a yeah, harder sell, I think. Uh, it is. Nerds. It is. But I think yeah. it's possible. Um, 
you know when you go to the, the, the airport, Francis, and you, you, you do, you guys have like a cell phone lot or a waiting parking lot or someplace you wait till your person oh, yeah, calls? They, I don't know if they still do, but I remember there used to be a lot. What I haven't you? had to use any of the parking lots really, so I don't know. Okay, well, we, we still have one of those, so I'm chilling in one of those. Okay. And the person I'm going to pick up says, hey, I'm landed. I don't have any luggage. I have a carry-on. I'll meet you at, you know, outside at passenger pickup. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking when I got the text that the person's already heading out of the plane, not immediate. I have cell service. I'm texting you. But right. the point the point is, is that I left the cell phone lot, as they call it, way too early. And oh. started doing the, I'm going to go to passenger pickup. And, oh, not there. So let me do a second lap. And then that's when I find out. I'm not even close to getting out of the plane yet. I'm like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? So I, I sell a lot. Well, I should. That's what I should have done. But I thought I'll oh, just geez. be, I will just break the law a little bit, kind of, sort of. But I'll have my hazards on, and your hazards are your international uh, in, uh, signal to it's okay for me to park here for a second. Right. So it isn't. But yeah. Yeah. So I drive all the way around, and I stop at the mouth of the airport passenger pickup area. I pull off to the side, hit the hazards. Where is this in relation to the to the demon horse? Uh, other side of the other side of the of the fucking complex. Oh, okay. So I, I'm sitting there, and I got the hazards on, and I'm like, "All right." A car pulls up behind me, and I look at the car, and I'm like, "Up, oh, just a car." Whatever. I was there for a good 10, 15 minutes. And then I heard the unmistakable sound of a cop air horn. And I didn't even look to see because there were two or three cars parked behind me now at this point. I'm like, well, they're not coming to talk to me. Put the car in gear and just took off. I'm like, nope, not. Wow. <laughs> Learn my lesson. Um, but uh, yeah, they they don't they don't joke around at the airport for anything. They don't take they don't like limericks inside the airport. They don't like you hanging out in any any unauthorized parking areas. Even with the international sign of, I'm checking my cell phone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wink, look, I wink. still think about. I still think about the 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 last time I I dropped someone off at the gate. To mm. their plane in like 99, 99 to 2000. Yeah. I, I was there at the gate waiting. I didn't have a ticket. I didn't have, uh, um, there was security was just a metal detector. Mm-hmm. Right. There was no, you, GSA didn't, you, didn't, that you didn't need to have a ticket to get into security. No. no. You could be in the, you could be in the lounge area in of the, of a terminal. And just hang and just chill there and like watch planes take off, right? And you had there was you could do whatever you wanted there, you know. It was kind of like a, a mall, even if you're like if you're so inclined to spend that much money just to go to the airport. But you know, it, it's literally just like okay, I'm just gonna chill here and like say goodbye to my you know the people I have to mm-hmm. you know send off and then walk from the terminal down, you know, and if anyone's been to LAX, it's a long way from a terminal to the to the car. So the reason that's why the reason you did it because there's all of this space and all of this time that you can spend with the person that you're seeing off to mm-hmm. be like, "Okay, well, goodbye." And now it's like, "No, you have to you have to walk the last mile to the terminal on your own." Yeah, the, Good you, luck. There's no there's no sharing a burger with your friend at the terminal no. grill. No. Which is the worst yeah. named place ever. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I'm not I'm surprised that's not the name of the place in Vegas where you have to be, you know, three hundred pounds to eat free. Mm. Um But yeah, it's <laughs> I don't know. I it's 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 just funny to kinda of think about that because there's uh, there's now at least two generations of people who don't remember mm-hmm. ever being able to do that in an airport. And it's quaint when they watch an eighties movie and they're like what are they doing at the gate? <laughs> yeah, how how are they doing that? How, oh, it's a movie. I guess they could just do that stuff in a movie. <laughs> right. It's a movie. Uh, you know, the, the, when Denver International Airport first opened, mm. there may have been a time or two or three 
for five where my friends and I were like, let's just go hang out yeah, and eat ex- overpriced food and make backstories to people when they get off the plane and meet their people at the gate. That, it made it that much more like, because there's like romantic scenes in movies where they're like, oh, they hug each other. They meet each other at the gate. They're running from across the way. Can't do that anymore because you have to like do it at baggage claim, which is lame. It's like, well, oh. it, at DIA, as we all call it here, there is a passenger greet area, but you have to go to the short term parking, short term parking, which charges you like, I think by that fucking minute or something. I'm not really sure. I've never done it because I don't have that kind of money. I don't I think I love anybody that much to meet them at the fucking passenger inside thing. Like you just meet me outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at that. Look, see, Ginger, that same thing. Yeah, go to the airport, hang out. Yeah, see? It must, it must be a thing that people commonly did. I thought, you know, I thought we were kind of original when we did it, but. Because you know. oh, the airport was cool. You got to watch airplanes fly out. You got to people watch the mm-hmm. international airport, you know, international airlines. You got to see people coming in. You got to. Like, like you said, make up stories as people come by. Um, you got to see things. You got to buy things that you couldn't buy anywhere else that were duty free. Right? Yeah, that's so, true. Oh, no taxes. Ooh, let me buy this alcohol or this, <laughs> you know, Toblerone. Mm, mm. Toblerone. You know. So, yeah, I get it. Like, do you know, Ginger and your experience of hanging out at the at the at the airport and. Kind of treating it like a mall. I'm a little surprised there's not a movie that kind of did that. Mm. Uh, mall like, Rats uh, Two. But in the Mall Rats Two, <laughs> Plane Rats, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Where how do they get these fucking rats on this fucking plane? <laughs> Starring Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Uh, to try and keep the laughter up because the other half of the show is gonna be depressing. No. Um. No. Uh, no, not depressing, but celebration. So, well, fuck it. We already had to spill the beans. Sure. Um, so last week, uh, two people, one person, a lot more people were aware of than the other, I would say, just <laughs> pop culture wise, pop culture wise. One of them is pretty niche, I think. One of the people who passed was yes. pretty niche. Uh, but we're, you know, we're burying the lead here. So, uh, Kevin Conroy. Uh, the voice of the animated Batman for the last yeah. 30 plus years. 1990, yes. 1992 was the first time he voiced Batman or Bruce. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so Kevin Conroy and the comedian Gallagher both died last week. I think on the same day or a day apart. I think it was a day apart. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think it was the same day. Uh, so people, are, who the fuck is Gallagher? Gallagher, stand-up comedian, uh, lots of props, uh, lots. Uh, if if George Carlin was a, a, well, this is opinion. So I was gonna say because Gallagher wasn't that kind of comedian. No, Gallagher but was... I, I, what I was gonna say, opinion. So if if Carlin was a master of linguistic linguistics, I can't even fucking say it. So I'm clearly not one. Um, Gallagher was a close second. The way was he? He, right. go, you need to go back and look at some of his bits on the English language. Yeah, because I was going to say, all I remember him by, because this is what you're going to hear in about a second, is is he had a splash. His comedy required a splash zone, <laughs> right? Yes, you needed to wear a poncho because the first two rows were going to get messy. Because part of his bit was having a gigantic kind of comedically large hammer, and he mm-hmm. would smash vet like a fruit, mainly a watermelon, right, in front of the, with the audience getting into the splash zone. So he'd smash it, and it just mm-hmm. just spray out onto the people in the first few rows. So you had a splash zone when he ever did his comedy. But that was only a part of it. But that's what mm-hmm. people remember. Like people like me remember that sure. outside of like bits. I don't remember the bits of like, like, you know, societal, I don't know, commentary sure. or whatever. Well, I, I remember mean, I'm gonna smash a thing. 
Sure, and I, I would agree with you that, that that's most mostly what people remember him by. And if you recall a half hour or so ago with the, the opening thing I did there, which was the the pitch he would give before he'd bring out Sledgematic, I changed it a little bit. Instead of the two podcasters, you take an ordinary apple. You place the ordinary apple between the two patented pans. Then you reach for the, the tool that's not a slicer, not a dicer, not a chopper and a hopper. What the hell can it possibly be? sludge He would take out the gigantic, comically sized uh, sledgehammer looking thing. And yes, apples, watermelons, chicken. Uh, what else did I see him do? Egg. Jello. All kinds of stuff. Action figures, I think, were in there. Like, so I, I looked it up just because I wanted to see what people remember him by, right? And um, he has a brother, too, that does the exact same bit, doesn't he? He doesn't have a brother <laughs> that does the exact same kind of comedy. Yeah, so... Just less successful. <laughs> yeah, so Gallagher was their last... Is is or was. I don't know if they're both yeah. dead now. Uh, is their actual last name. Uh, Leo Gallagher, which is the guy who just died. And his brother, Ron. Ron has... Ron looks a lot like his older brother, Leo. Mm -hmm. And sometime in the 90s, approached Gallagher 1. Gallagher... uh, He he approached Gallagher OG and asked if there was any way he can take parts of the tour on stage for himself and perform as Gallagher 2. T O O or T W O, depending on who was promoting. Um, and I guess Leo told Ron, sure, but don't do the sledge matic And then Ron was like, fuck you, I'm doing it anyway because I look like you. And yeah, yeah. F- performed for many years in the early 90s. I don't know about many years, but many shows in the early 90s. Uh, as Gallagher 2. But some of the promotional stuff that was out there didn't specifically say if it was Leo or OG or Ron 2 that was performing. Um, Early 2000s, OG sued 2 for like IP infringement or some shit. And apparently it was a comedic hearing. I guess he got a lot of laughs. Uh, Ron right. did, or not Ron, Leo did. And the judge awarded Leo basically everything and told Ron to stop doing anything that might infringe on your brother's stuff, including the look. You got to you gotta change your yeah. look as well. So, yeah. Look exactly alike. It, apparently, yes. It's, it's, especially when they were touring. It was very hard to tell the difference between the two. I never saw any... Uh, um, any footage of Ron that I'm aware of. All the right. Gallagher stuff I've ever seen has always been Leo. Um, yeah, there's a he does a whole thing on just the words and how we pronounce them. Um, mm-hmm. looking at like the word dough, and then pr- pronouncing another word that's basically s- spelt the same way but it has a different pronunciation. And he just goes on and on and on about that. Um, there was a thing that tickled me as a child, and it, it stuck with me for so long. I don't understand why, because it's so stupid. And it was a flub on his part. Mm-hmm. But he was talking about what happens to your lap when you stand up. You no longer have a lap. That's true. And when you sit down, <laughs> you suddenly have a lap. And But when he was doing it, he, he got confused. So when he stood up, he's like, I have a lap. And he sit down and he goes, now I don't. And he did it like three times before he's like, wait a second. I did this wrong. Something doesn't seem right here. And I, like I said, I don't know why, but it has stuck with me for years. I guess I could show the picture yeah. while we're talking about him. So people oh, know what he have, looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, Sadly, every article calls him the, wa- the oh he even has a watermelon on his yeah. head well oh man 
Because that was because yeah, they call him the watermelon smashing comedian. Yeah. That's that's what he's known as. Uh, you know, of all the big things or all the things that he'd smash, the watermelon was always the biggest, the biggest draw because it had the biggest splash. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Well, they, yeah. The the first two or three rows of his crowd, he had a name for them. You remember, like Arsenio Hall had a name for the the what was it? The dog pound. The dog pound. Yeah. Right. Uh, the first two or three rows of a Gallagher audience had a name. They like. Oh, I wish I could remember. I don't remember what the name is. Uh, you have. That's con- why I said he. The, I just call it the splash zone because that's what it was essentially. Right. It's a splash zone. But I don't remember the name of the people who he calls right at the beginning. You know, right at the front of the 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 audience. I just know that it's. You know, it's it's interesting that he you know that like that's what he's known for but also i had no idea but he passed away like near me like two hours away from me oh wow like like, in palm desert i'm like oh i wonder if he was still performing like at at his age of uh up until a few years ago he was he had like several heart attacks apparently in the last couple years Um, I found it. the the first The first few rows of his show, he uh, he called it Death Row. So not not a wow. name for That's the dramatic. not not a name for the people, but yeah, Death Row. There were people that actually got hurt. Uh, yeah. at Gallagher shows, there was a lady. I remember a lady that got hit in the head with a like a stuffy, but the stuffy had a fire extinguisher in it or something like that. It had something hard in it and she hit her head. And I think the judge awarded it to Gallagher anyway. Cause he's like, no, that was too funny. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, it's funny. You got, you, you went, you went to a Gallagher show and you, you got hurt. Like who's, who's wrong on. You signed the waiver. Yeah, lady. exactly. You signed the waiver when you enter into the when you enter into a Gallagher show. There's they give you a waiver saying if you get hurt by one of my gangs, right. <laughs> your own damn fault for not ducking. Uh, like, okay, All right. a lot of a lot of stuff that's out there. That I think the most prominent stand-ups. I don't even know what you what he did. You can call as a stand-up, but there's one that has a gigantic couch in the background that's a trampoline, from what I can remember. Um, All right. There's one where he's sitting in a the one where I'm talking about where he's talking about uh, the English language. He's sitting in like in an old school like school desk that's way too right. short for him to be sitting in, but it somehow he fits in it. Uh, just very odd set dresses and set well sets, I guess. Set dressings. Well, he's big on um, he's big on prop comedies. So. Yes, I I. I I will go out on a limb. I have this is all fucking speculation, uh, but I would I'd be willing to bet that Carrot Top, Carrot Top took a lot of inspiration from Gallagher. Oh, well, Carrot Top is like half the man's age, so I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, uh, just totally. Carrot Ga- Top wouldn't be where he's today without Gallagher. There you go. Uh, Gallagher always made me laugh. Always, always, always made okay. me laugh. Um, uh, the, some of his bits. Definitely, you know, didn't age very yeah. well. No, like some of, some of his stuff probably could be looked at as homophobic, possibly racist or misogynistic or something. But it, it, he, I don't know. He, I don't know. I don't I mean, recall. I, I don't have recall. To give a, the disclaimer. Right? Yeah, like yeah, I'd have to go back disclaimer. and like do the research and watch all his specials, and I'm not gonna do that. Even though I do have a lot of them on like one of the lists on Tubi or Pluto, sure. Because you well, know, I mean, whatever his comedy was, it doesn't matter. He passed away, right? Yeah. Like, you know, whatever it was, right? It's irrelevant. It's a irrelevant. Yeah, irrelevant. The guy at this point. Yeah, I mean, he the, made the guy he made, was he made people laugh. That's all that is. Yeah, I was gonna say the yeah the guy was beloved. Every you know he was uh, he'll, he'll be remembered and he'll be missed for sure. As I try to drink my soda. Uh, so then, I mean, I mean, the other half of that um, last week, uh, last week kicking the balls, um, yeah. was the passing of the voice actor of Batman, Kevin Conroy. Uh, yeah. 
I want to say we passed him up. I'm sorry. I'll change it. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's like, the audio oh, people, the audio <laughs> people are like, what's going on? The picture was, was too big, and Francis didn't like being <laughs> overshadowed by <laughs> Kevin Conroy. Um, it's just, I have no forehead, thinks the Kevin Conroy. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, I started voicing uh, Batman in 92, but before that, um, I want to say late 70s, I think. I did a quick quick look-see just to see what kind of other stuff he did. But late 70s, I want to say he started doing TV stuff. Uh, before that, he did onstage productions of Hamlet uh, and a few other things. Um, he was... I wrote the name down because I thought it was a funny name. Bart Falmont on Dynasty. Oh, wow. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, also had, the, if you go back and look at his, his credits, he is in countless pi uh, pilots for, or one shots uh, episodes. Uh, I think the highest number of episodes of a TV show, I got the hiccups, uh, was like close to 80. That's pretty good. Definitely. Um, but a lot of one-shots, a lot of pilots. Uh, like I said, 1992 uh, was... Oh, oh, yeah. He was also on Cheers, Matlock, and Murphy Brown. I haven't, oh, God. I haven't wow. seen the, the name Nur Murphy Brown in forever, so I had to write that down. It's funny because they tried to reboot that show, too. They did. So, they yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, so 1992 started as the bat. There are two things that have yet to come out. No, wait, one has yet to come out. The other one is He Man, where he played uh, Hordak in uh, the. What, can we call it the Kevin Smith He Man? I think so. Yeah, okay. I mean, you can. That's that is his, I think that's his He Man. Yeah. Okay, so Kevin Smith He Man, he was Hordak, which I think is awesome. Uh, and then something for DC called Multiverses. Yeah, it's a, it's a fighting game. Uh, no, free, it's a free to play fighting game, and he was probably the voice of Batman on that. I was hoping that was a movie nope, about a kicking game. Superman's ass or something. Yeah, well, he does in the game. Yeah, well, it's, it's a very popular beat em up video game. Oh, well, or a uh, fighter. I didn't know that. Yeah, interesting. Uh, well, I mean. It, I, there, there's been two to me there's only been two Batmans Adam West and Kevin Adam Conroy West. yeah, yeah. Uh, those those are my bats you know it was cool seeing George in his cod piece uh, it was cool seeing the other guy in his nipples oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was cool hearing Michael Sarah, Keaton uh, yeah. Michael Keaton did yeah. great yeah. Michael Keaton did great but he wasn't, he, I mean, even though it was impressionable, what was it, 1989? That was an impressionable time in my year. I love it in my year, in my time. Uh, I loved that movie. But Adam West yeah. was still my Batman sure. at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was I going to say, though? Forgot. Doesn't matter. Um, damn it. What was I going to say? Shit. Well. I don't know, but the the Batman animated animated series I loved. I fell in love with it immediately. There was something about it that it was dark, and there the not only were the stories dark and Batman's dark, the cartoon itself was dark. Right, and I found out why later in life. It was all uh, drawn on black paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, that's they went the fine. other way. Yeah, they went the complete opposite way, where they usually do things on white. Uh, so that was that was cool. Um, he, I mean, we've seen Kevin Conroy at San Diego Comic Con, at the DC yeah. at the DC we've seen him booth, and not yeah. not there to talk to him, not there to wait in line to talk to him, just seeing him and seeing the mass amount of people that were just losing their shit. It is. Yeah. It was always awesome to see. I I want to say we passed him up in a hallway once as well. Um, no, probably. You know, I mean, it's very you know, possible because we, well, that you know we bump we bump elbows with all the important people. 
that's true. We we ran into Kevin Smith. We ran into mm-hmm. um, what's this face from, uh, from Animaniacs? Um, the voice of Wayaco. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, drawing a blank right um, now too. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank for that guy. Uh, we've, but we've, we've yeah, we've definitely uh, bumped into uh, quite a few celeb- celebrities. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, in our time, <laughs> uh, actually, um, but, yeah. since I did just mention San Diego. Um, did you see the fiasco last week of no. people trying to get tickets to San Diego Comic Con? Oh, I didn't. Holy um, shit! They they I... sold out in all of all four wait, five days, four and a half days, in an hour. Oh yeah. Which I don't know why. No offense to San Diego Comic Con, but. I'm, be- I'm feeling that be- that place is becoming less and less relevant as more conventions do cool- cooler and cooler things, like mm. other ones outside of San Diego. I mean, I get that San Diego's the big one, mm-hmm. but it, like, I, like, I don't know. I feel like it's lost a lot of its luster since we stopped going. Um, that's because we're not there. I, I think that maybe that's what it is. <laughs> but you know, like even the last the last time we went was cool and all. It was great, but I also felt like well. There seems to be less hype here hmm. uh, th- that year, and I think it, it declined ever since. So, but yeah, crazy. I got the <laughs> I got the email to apply for press <laughs> for for San Diego, and I'm like, all right, great. Uh, behind little little inside baseball on that one, but oh, oh well, I didn't get that email, so well, fuck you. Uh, well, because because I have the I have the outlet right because right. I have the outlet for WonderCon, so they're like, oh, by the way, your outlets eligible for um press at at san diego i'm like you're not gonna give it to me so i don't know why i'm gonna bother to look at his email right right but thanks for letting me know but your little but yeah, your little right. brother loves to have us there not, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> maybe we want maybe ne- maybe we'll see next year we never know you never know you, you never know um we actually have reason to go in this year not next year i mean it's very well what I have to tell you later might increase that as well. Um, oh, there you go. And more inside baseball. Uh, but, yeah, so those two guys both, you know, like I said, watching years of Superman versus, was it Superman and Batman or verse? Oh, oh, you mean the one where they were? Superman yeah, and was, Batman um, Adventures. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, watching that, the Batman animated series, Justice League, and then all the Batman one-shot movies that came out uh video games, well. video games i didn't do as many video games to be honest with you i felt all the batman video games were clunky at best which is so funny because they're beloved they the are Arkham games are so beloved but and they're I, just button smashers them, yeah. there's like oh. i'm sure i'm sure there's technique but it's just a Cardinal button sin there josh it's a Cardinal button sins. it's a button smashing game Cardinal sins, Josh. Cardinal sins. It's just saying. How dare you? How dare you? I said but, yeah. it. Um, Cry two tears in a bucket. Yeah, no, but it, it's uh, yeah. And look, very few um, celebrity deaths mean anything to me. Not not just be, just because I don't have a, a, as tight a connection to celebrities. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I don't really care for about most celebrities. But I would say this is probably the sec- second to Robin Williams in my, like, mm. oh, wow, I really am sad that this person died because they, you know, th- they represent a lot of what I like about, you know, my, you know it reminds me a lot of my childhood. And um, they were big, you know, this guy narrated, no, not narrated, but he, you know, he was the voice actor for a lot of my childhood thanks to to Batman and things mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So, like, I mean, that guy no, is a big deal. Kids ran around for years screaming, I am the knight. I am Batman. Yeah. yeah. That's that's him. Yeah. that's yeah. Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, it, it, I, I will agree with you that it was definitely something, that, the outpour of love this guy has gotten. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. That's the other thing, yeah. It was amazing. And I haven't seen anything like that since Robin Williams. Right, and Speaking it's from of. people, yeah, and it's from people, oh, right, because he, he had his anniversary recently mm-hmm. of his passing, but, yeah, no, I, I, like, Tara Strong did a big, like, couple of pictures and stuff, and had, like, Oh, she did a, a huge thread. 
yeah, as a thread on Twitter, and a couple other voice actors were giving big threads on Twitter talking about uh, Kevin Conroy and like uh, I think Kevin Smith even did one because he you know he's a big Batman fan, so mm-hmm. like a lot of love for this for someone who really you never got to see, you only got to hear, and that's um, even more kind of poignant for myself and I, maybe even Josh. I'm not going to speak for Josh, but like we're people who use our voice solely for stuff right like we ha- we talk a lot and so you know it's something we can really relate to where people only know us based some people out there probably only know us based on how we sound versus what we look like for sure it's like, oh that's kevin conroy like that's totally that guy yeah it's it's one of those things where i bet if you went back and watched the episode of dynasty that uh, uh bart falmont is in <laughs> bart falmont yeah. Uh, I bet you yeah. his his natural speaking voice wasn't that off from Batman or Bruce. No, he sounded Bruce was his his he's kind of his um basically natural yeah, speaking his, voice. I think it was yeah, pretty damn close to. I think he you know he he bass boosted himself if you will for for yeah. Batman for sure. But he did yeah. very yeah. very close to his his speaking voice and. To be able to do that, just to be yourself for 30 plus years, basically, not be yourself, but not have to, not have to be Chris Latta and be Starscream. You know, (sighs) think, think, think if Chris Latta didn't die so early, you know, and, and excuse me, they kept Starscream alive Mm -hmm. or Cobra Commander alive. For for GI Joe, for years you would you would still be hearing his voice, no doubt. I mean, no Chris doubt Chris Latta, go back to season one of The Simpsons. Chris Latta was the voice of uh, Mr. Burns. Oh, really? That's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously he wasn't doing Starscream <laughs> or Cobra no, Commander, no, 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 but, but still, yeah. It's a th- it's a th- Burns is a distinct voice, so you know mm-hmm. that's it's crazy that it, it got switched off to another actor. But yeah, wow. It's uh, yeah, it's just it's crazy to see how much stuff he did. You should really go back and and look at his credits because it, there's a like I said a shit ton of TV stuff, and then mm-hmm. from 1992 to 22, it's basically all just Batman animated, Justice League, video yeah. games. And mm-hmm. and standalone Batman movies, yeah, yeah. like the one where he Fantastic. bangs Batgirl. <laughs> oh, oh God! <laughs> Was he the voice of Batman for um, the Killing Joke? I don't yeah, I'm that. pretty damn sure he is. I know he was for Mask of the Phantasm, and that's a good one. Uh, I like that one. I like that Red one a Hood. lot. Red uh, yeah, Red Hood, I didn't like as much. Um, that was good. Mr. Freeze was a, that one was excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The, what is it? Uh, the Secret of Batgirl, Batwoman? Oh, that I don't know. That's, it's, that's, I don't know what the title is, but it's where you first get introduced to um, uh, Barbara playing Batgirl, I think. Oh, well, there you go. I think. Yeah. But yeah, the both it, it you know to wrap that up. It's just you know it it it, uh, it was a big dick kick in the dick, you know. First Kevin Conroy, and then to find out Gallagher a day or two later. Um, like I said, the the outpour of love mostly for Kevin Conroy. Um, there were a lot of comedians out there that were giving praise to Gallagher, but most of Twitter, oh, yeah. most of Twitter of the later half of last week was all Kevin Conroy. The yeah. voice of many people's childhood. Yeah, so. very much so. Very much so. I think the Gallagher, the voice of of a different generation of yeah. children. Dink, dink. Yeah. yeah. Um, totally. They're they're just they're not in <laughs> that generation oh, is no. not on Twitter as much. No, no, that that generation is, um, yeah, is probably at this point raising grandchildren. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe not. You want a shovel? Maybe not. You want a shovel, no. Francis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, anyway, anyway, <laughs> moving on, moving on. Nothing to see here. Uh, so Thanksgiving, Francis. Um, without breaking too much kayfabe, are you going to any buffets this year for Thanksgiving? Uh, no. I well, I can't. <laughs> oh, mostly I, given my yeah. okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, let me it's, rephrase uh, I, the question. I don't talk about it much. So let me rephrase the question. Is your family gonna be having a buffet while you no, get no. you know uh, FaceTimed? Because that's cruel. That's, that would that's be kind of cruel. That would be. But no, uh, fortunately not. Um, no, it'll be pretty. You know, Thanksgiving is pretty quiet time of year. Um, holidays are pretty quiet time for, for year for me. So I, 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 which I don't mind, gets me a lot of time to catch up on stuff. Um, but yeah, are you having a festive and rambunctious? Thanksgiving this year? Uh, rambunctious, probably not. Um, festive, oh, okay. probably, yes. Um, Ooh, very nice. Uh, festive, all right, cool. New faces at the table. Oh, new, potentially, right? Old new faces, new old faces as well. Possible, possible. Ooh. Um, oh, wow. But I don't I don't know the status of, of anybody outside of myself. But... I will say that my my dating partner has been given an invite to to Ooh. come have turkey and stuffing doused with gravy. Um, I just like the new term dating partner. That's a fun. That's a fun term. Well, now the question really is, um, will you have your turkey deep fried or oven roasted? Uh, it'll be oven. It'll be oven. Oh, you don't uh, deep fry. You don't get a pit and like. And like a well, like a pulley rig system, and then drop like the most dangerous, you know, piece of meat into a boiling pot of oil that could potentially burn your house down, just to make deep fried uh, turkey. I love <laughs> deep fried turkey. I do too. I I, I, think I don't think it. I don't think it's really worth uh, possibly setting the neighborhood on fire for it. Or oh, no, it's worth it. <laughs> it's totally worth it. Plus, plus, <laughs> so good. I don't know how to cook, so I am not going to be doing shit. But I You're will be eating uh, a lot of somebody's food. You could bring a pie. Come on, bring a pie. Bring like the. You know what you should do? Bring cans of cranberry sauce. Just the can, and just <laughs> you know, it just slurps out, and then you cut it right. I hate. Little, I don't like, like slices stuff. for your turkey. Uh, my 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 little brother loves that stuff. Not me. Hey, there you go. You already have someone who's already a fan of. of... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, That's the sound it makes when it comes out of the can. <laughs> uh, I, I when I when I ran the first dispensary that I was working yes. at, I did a food drive while we were there, and I made a big sign. It said, you know, what the rules basically of the, the food drive were. Because if you brought in stuff, we gave you a discount on product or your purchase. Okay. But I put on this big poster board that I got. It said, don't reach in the back of your fucking pantry and pull out a dusty, you know, can of lima beans or some cream corn or, you know, cream of mushroom or. Something like that. You need to bring something in that people actually want to eat. So I put oh, like yeah. I put like Chef Boy RD raviolis and meat, you know, spaghetti and meatballs and yeah. cans of chili Everyone. and you know things that people actually like, want to eat because everybody you know everybody's gotten food from the the hunger hunger barrel before. Well, most people I know are already you know always did and. Okay. It was always a disappointment for them. I saw a disappointment on their face when they were like, "Yep, yeah, we got we got some lima beans." Yeah, here's some. Here's just a can of carrots. Yeah, we we got a can of peas. Awesome. Yeah. Nobody wants that, but if somebody got a can of raviolis, man, they might just open them up, sprinkle some cheese in them, and eat them. Or like a sandwich in a can, or like like a, a cheeseburger uh, in a can. Oh, cheeseburger in a can? Yeah, there's cheeseburger. If somebody had brought a cheeseburger in a can, I would have given them the discount. Fuck yes. Yeah. Now nobody nobody wants to eat a cheeseburger in a can. 
granted. No, I hear it's good, though. I hear it's actually pretty decent. I'm sure it is, but nobody wants to eat. It's like yeah. eating a, a, a whole chicken in a can. Oh, yeah, the whole chicken, get the whole chicken in a can, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. One, that, one, that one's tough, man, because the fat all congeals and everything. It is kind of and gross, it's like can it's, it's like cr- it's like the cranberry juice or the cranberry sauce it of is. chicken. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. It's gel. It's very gelatinous. Yeah, and it's like um, a Cornish hen. It's not even a fucking chicken. No, well, yeah, okay, it has to be <laughs> can. Yeah, you're right. It <laughs> yeah, it it's like can. you remember the old fucking like Maxwell House coffee cans. Yeah, they were yeah, like a twelve well, yeah, inches oh. wide, or, or it's a circle. So how do you measure? It's 12, 12 inches in circumference. circumference. Yeah. Um, that's that would be a huge fucking can. I think it was less than that. Doesn't matter. It was less than that. It was like a yeah six or seven inches. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, still, it was pretty big. Yeah, that's how you'd fit a whole chicken in one of those. But oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you had like a year supply of of coffee in there. Just dump mm-hmm. that out. Put the turkey in there. You're done. Or chicken in there. You're done. Well, when you were when you were done with the coffee, you used it to put. Uh, your used oil in. Oh yeah, just like you know how you put um, sewing supplies in the Danish cookie can- oh, yeah, canister, yeah. right? You, you you put you put oil into the <laughs> into the old uh, U ban or um, whatever. Yeah, I'll tell you a yeah. funny story. God, yes. Uh, uh, for some reason, uh, my my grandmother at her house they reused the can of mayonnaise. And made ranch in the in the jar of mayonnaise because yeah, sure that makes yeah. sense, right? That's the base of, of ranch. Uh, but nobody labeled it, and my grandmother oh, no. thought it was mayonnaise and made me a sandwich, a bacon and egg sandwich with ranch. That doesn't it, sound awful. It was one of the most disgusting things I've ever eaten in my <laughs> life. But because yeah, I'm fucking right. too polite. And shy around my own family, I powered through it as a young teenage boy. I'm like, yeah, this is fucking delicious, Grandma. You nod and smile. Yeah. Thank you, Grandma. The whole time I'm like, it's like, it's sour. This is disgusting. (laughs) Oh, my God. Egg and ranch don't mix, bro. That's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, we put pizza and ranch. I figure maybe ranch goes with everything, but mm. you know, I guess pizza goes with everything really more than it is that ranch goes P- with everything. Pizza goes with everything. I think people, yeah. you know, they, they can't put ketchup on pizza, so they needed something. I mean, and, and, sauce and, and, is already I, kind of but, ketchup, right? Kind of. Well, there's sauce <laughs> on the of. pizza. It's, yeah. You know, that's the base of the pizza. Well, I guess the dough is the base of the pizza, but... I. I I, I think I think ranch eating pizza and ranch came about the day after the pizza yes. was ordered. I don't think I've never seen anybody take hot fresh pizza p- slices of pizza and just douse them in ranch. Well, I, I have I've seen that. Those people should be. I just I think I, 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 I hang out. Yeah, I was gonna say I hang out with unruly people. I prefer personally if I'm gonna have a pizza, I prefer the garlic sauce. That, that you can get like a little garlic from like butter. from fucking dip. Papa John's or whatever. No, but every, now every place does it. Oh. Papa John started it. Now every place does it. Isn't it just every? You have to order it, but yeah. Isn't it just garlic flavored grease? It's garlic butter. Yeah, it's butter with garlic oh. mixed in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought they I just mean, dripped like the, the grease off the that... pizza and threw some garlic cloves in it and. Not the healthiest thing in the world. It's sure. just it's butter. Like you're literally just putting butter not on on, on a pizza. Well, technically you use it for the crust. Oh, yeah. but is it is it ghee or is it butter? Oh, that's a good question. I don't mm. know. It could just be garlic flavored butter flavored substance <laughs> or something, right? Like it's gonna be like, you it's, know, it's not gonna be it, the real It's kinda like when you go to a fish and chips joint and they give you that, that mm. stuff that's called Malt vinegar or whatever. What? It, oh yeah, malt vinegar. Yeah, yeah that's it's not. not a, it's, it's not a Heinz malt vinegar it, bottle. It's not real malt vinegar. Well, it's not even that's shit that's in there is not even technically vinegar. If you look at the definition of vinegar, what, oh really? Yeah, it's just a bunch of shit <laughs> okay. in a bottle. They just like I don't know what to call it. It's vinegary, I guess. Let's just call it vinegar. Yeah. yeah. Well. So, yeah, well, when you're talking about fish and chips and the other shit we just talked about the last five minutes, you clearly are out of topic. So, um, no, 
well, we were talking. Well, no, it was it was very relevant to the, the, yeah, the topic of food for Thanksgiving. That, that was, was what we were talking about. I, yeah, we just kind of drove so, off the path. Yeah, we just kind of tangented like we normally do. But so it's it sounds good. Like you're, I'm glad to hear though that you're going to have a a fun, uh, family filled Thanksgiving with potentially a new person in tow. Potentially, potentially, possibly, possibly. You don't know. Yeah, we don't know yet. But that's good. But that's it's a good it, time. So hey. Anyway. Possibly, maybe is always better than no. Yeah, your your mother, wherever she is, you know, <laughs> is probably very happy that like she's all the boy all the boys are going to be there for the holidays. So oh yes, oh yeah, wherever you are, Josh's mother. <laughs> wherever, I, wherever, wherever, wherever you are. <laughs> Um, I'm certain that uh, you're excited for everyone getting together again for the holidays. So, fun times. Well, hopefully your family comes to visit you, and uh, they don't go right. buffet jumping without you, or at least they bring oh, you, it, you know, clam shells of I, all the favorite places they went. I mean, I've 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 been very I've I've actually liked kind of you know kind of doing just kind of having really quiet like holidays because it used to be my, my holidays when my family was bigger in other words when like the extended family participated we we're like 200 people strong sometimes mm. right like we we're a lot of people in like a house it's a lot and it's really stressful and it's like oh my god there's so many people and there's so much food and everything's happening you know, all at once and they have to say hi to all the cousins and all the aunts and uncles blah 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 blah, blah. And like it's really kind of like blah it's loud and obnoxious and so I've kind of learned to appreciate, like, nothing's happening. Oh, nothing's happening. Oh, I can sleep. Like, I can sleep right after I eat. Thank God. Like, <laughs> oh, this is great. Like, no one's going to bother me. I can just, like, eat some so, turkey, you know, like so, a little turkey sandwich and, like, uh, that's that's just, be happy. just about what I was going to ask. So you're going to go uh, <laughs> to the grocery store and get you a pack of Oscar Mayer, you know, fucking turkey slices or no, at least you, you need at least go to the turkey. fucking, you know, deli counter and be like, give me some fucking yeah. turkey. I'll go to the Boston market and get like, get like a, a turkey sandwich or something with some, real slices of turkey. With some, with like some a Boston baked beans. And... Yeah. No, because that's the candy. I'm not going to do the Boston baked beans. But oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the huh. chocolate. That's the candy with the red shell. Yeah. 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 Now I'll get like a little bottle of Martinelli's and like you know, a little bit of turkey and whatever, and just call it a day. And then some, I get to go to sleep after I eat. It's gonna be amazing. Some, some kind of hostess product of some kind. Oh, you gotta have a little bit of dessert somewhere, yeah. of course. Yeah. Fuck Maybe tasty a slice cake. Of pumpkin pie or something. <laughs> no, no. What? Really? You don't like tasty cakes? I I. One of my favorite snacks in the world, Francis. Is a root yes. beer, I don't care what brand, a root beer oh. and Hostess cupcake. Well, two Hostess cupcakes. Oh you yeah, can't, you, you can't just eat one; beer. the other one will go stale. Um, yeah, exactly. So when we were in Philadelphia one time, I arrived before you and Shelly got there, so I had a, a whole yes. a whole day and an evening to occupy myself with, and. Yes. There was a gas station on the, or there was a Wawa in the parking lot. A Wawa. So I went, yeah, I'll just go to the Wawa. I'll get me some food. I'll get me a root beer and a hostess and I'll, you know, I'll calm my nerves and I won't have an anxiety attack and I'll just be fine. And I walked in and I went up and down every aisle and I got to the, the, hey, the candy those. aisle and I went, where the, who the, what the fuck is a tasty cake? <laughs> <laughs> Like, where's the fucking hostess section? Hostess does not exist on the East Coast. Well, it does, but well, it does. Tasty cake not is in this, is Philly specifically. Yeah. yeah. So it, it not have a not yeah. knowing the ingredients of tasty cake, and at the time not having glasses and probably couldn't see straight, I decided not get you know just get a few sleeves of pistachios or something like that. But you know. Right. Yeah. No, tasty. Yeah, look, I knew a guy. I worked with a guy who was from Philly, and he's like, "No, nah, tasty cakes are superior to Hostess." And I'm like, "No, they taste the same." I don't, 
I've had them. They taste more or less the same. Like, there's not that big a difference between the Hostess and, and Taste Cake. Now, Look, if, if you're talking if, Little Debbie, then that's mm. a, then we have a conversation. But Little Debbie is usually not in the conversation. Anyway, sorry, you're saying. Josh, if, yeah. if anybody wants to, 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 to figure this out and, you know, we can do a taste test, <laughs> send us some Tasty yeah, Cake stuff. Yeah. And, and you need a P.O. box. You need a P.O. box. I do need a P.O. box for us to try. You have a P.O. Yeah. box, but somebody have to get in contact with us first. Yeah. And and honestly, I'd I mean, probably be allergic to all the shit anyway, so you'd have to eat it anyhow. No, it had. Yeah, that's true. It has to be food we both can eat. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Yeah. But we, we could. Do- yeah, because that'd be fun to do like, you know, on the show, like taste tests. That'd be fun. Yeah. That would be fun, actually. <laughs> That'd be fun. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That'd be fun. It's just food sent in from our fans. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's some like food from Ireland. Mm. It's called whatever. You know, here's some uh, Tito's from Ireland. They don't use sunflower oil in Tito's. Here, try some. That that'd, that'd be, be cool. I, I mean, I guess it'd be kind of cool way to fucking you know die too, is if you know one of your. People that you listen to, listen to your like, stop talking. <laughs> no, because I know you're gonna read the ingredients. You're not gonna die no. for me because you're gonna be like, nope. Here yeah. you go. You're gonna read it. Yes, I will. Yeah. I will. Anyway, um, no, anyway, I, um, I think that's the show for this week, though. I don't think I got anything else. Um, I, Fran- say, I don't remember. I don't think anything else happened. So you're good. Yeah, not a lot else happened really. It's just a lot of. A lot of preparation for things that are about to happen. Uh, but Francis, where can people find you on the internet, uh, possibly on a live want- thing or wherever else? Yeah, look, I, I the one thing I want to to shout out is tinyurl.com slash monster tales. We're only seven days away from the thing ending. We have uh, broken our last... Uh, stretch goal, which means that you can get a lot of stuff if you, you know, um, uh, contribute to the Kickstarter. You're going to get just a ton of stuff. Uh, if you're, if you do like a ten dollar ebook, you're just going to get like, here's all your th- here, just shove things into your face because you get so many things. Giggity. So go check it out. Yeah, <laughs> Monster Tales. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, go on. Your turn. That's all I want to. That's the one number one thing I want to po- until next week or whenever we record again. Then I'll go back to sincere and all that stuff. But for now, the only one, the only place I want you to go is that URL, so you can you can uh, get the book because it's going to be awesome. It will be awesome because Francis is one of the authors, one of the twenty oh, authors yeah, that, that are on this that. book, yeah. uh, with our good friend, uh, uh, what's his name, Jeff Burns. I just totally had a brain fart. And uh, a couple of our other friends, more friends with Francis than they are with me. Uh, but uh, Mark's pile, I think he's putting the book yeah. on, or he's one of the he's contributors. The, he's the publisher. He's the publisher. He's the he's the, he's the, he's and I think there's somebody else that you and I know that is also going to be an author on this thing. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I just can't think of who they might be. But anyway, you can find me at 303 underscore ninja on the Twitter. 303 ninja on the Instagram. Uh, you can email us at the POI podcast at gmail.com. Call us at 314 764 7631. It spells out POI pod one. Uh, that's everything. We'll be here next Tuesday, as we always are, for another hour of fun. The song is over, so I'm just going to dump out of here and get out of here. Um, bye. <laughs>